Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics, 3-in-1 tree guard paint, and today we're going to be talking about what I call the wimpy plant test, also known as the wilted plant test or the droopy plant test and also called the buddy plant test. Um, we just wrapped up a continuation of our potted citrus plant, which we I'll put the link down below. And I just um, finished wrapping it up with um, the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint, which I just applied to the, um, the lower trunk. And then we also did a foliar spray where we actually cooled off the entire plant. And then with this product, which I'll share with you real quick, and it's called Ivory Organic. It's a 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint, just add water, a natural tree trunk and branch barrier protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodents. For uses on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees and shrubs, and it's a non-toxic, environmentally safe and organic product. And I just noticed again, when we actually coated the plant in the last video, we had the stake um, before we applied the paint. So I've just noticed there's still a couple more spots that could have got a little better. And citrus are, are actually known for actually getting sunburn. And a lot of other plants are sensitive to sunburn as this plant is growing in the tree form and hence the bark is exposed to sun all day long. And just like our skin, it too can benefit from, from protection and this being an organic paint solution for your plants. So in this class, I'm gonna teach you about how to determine when to water your plant without the need for a watering meter, such as this one over here. This, and say goodbye to actually having to stick your finger in the pot to determine whether or not your pot's ready to be watered. Fortunately, and I wanna reemphasize the importance of using a clay pot, when I came out earlier, and you can still see this, the pot is actually still retaining water as you can see that it's a little bit darker coloration at the bottom half than it is here at the lip of the plant as it's starting to dry out in this morning sun um, and here we are now just to give your bearings we're actually in the middle of August here in Los Angeles so you know that we're dealing with another 85 degree day um, and we've been going back and forth um, every day this month with temperatures between the 80s and 90s and sometimes approaching the 100s um, so here we are with our potted plant. It's still staying cool and the last time we watered this was three days ago. But what I'm gonna share with you today is a way to actually determine whether or not your plant is ready for watering and especially with citrus which are drought tolerant and actually a lot of trees and plants benefit from actually being dry in between your watering cycles. To actually keep your plants continuously moist actually can do more harm than good. Being continuously moist harbors diseases and bacteria and um, and actually can contribute to root rot as well. So it's important that between your waterings that you allow your soil to dry and I'm going to give you a simple test so that you can avoid having to stick your fingers in a bacteria full soil. As you know we put a lot of organic material in this including a lot of manure um, or sources of manure whether it's bat guano or chicken manure or whatever the source is and that's actually you know among the dozens of different bacteria that can be in the soil, equalize one of those and we know that it's not good to be sticking your fingers um, and hopefully you're washing your hands thoroughly in between. So, And I've actually got a neighbor that actually has a hundred potted plants so I couldn't imagine him sticking his finger into 100 pots to determine when and how often to water. So I'm going to share with you right now what I like to call the wimpy plant test and to determine what is this wimpy plant or what we're going to do is actually give this plant a buddy. Um, and below me here, I've actually got a variety of plants to choose from and I want to help you determine what is the right plant to actually be putting in your container plant as a buddy to help you determine when is the best time to water your plant. So I have over here um, a variety of plants. I'll share with you one by one what I've got here. This one here is a petunia. This one over here is obviously a cactus of the aloe variety. As you can see, this one is pretty prickly. I've got over here a, um, a breed of um, pepper plant, and you can see how it's got multi colors on it, and it's called Purple Flash Ornamental Pepper. So just I picked it up just because of the um, coloration of the leaves, being purple, white, and green. Um, and then this one here is a garden sage, and I've got as well a strawberry plant, and I've got your sweet basil, which is typical in the home garden. So I've got a variety of plants here, and what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna leave them outside, and I'm gonna visit them in one, in possibly two days. They've just been watered, I picked them up from the nursery yesterday. We're gonna leave them out in full sun, which is where this plant is, and we're gonna see how these plants react, and we're gonna determine which one is the wimpy plant. Um, and the wimpy plant will be characterized by the one that actually will wilt the most, and which one will actually um, indicate that it's water stressed, and by wilting, 
um, or the leaves drooping, we're going to be able to determine which one is the wimpy plant, which will help us determine when it's time to water your potted plant next. So of these plants, take a look one more time. And hopefully you can take a guess at which one is going to be wilted when we come and visit this in the next day or two. I'll see you soon. So here we are, three days later. We've left these plants out, which are right here below me, for three days with no water. And we're now able to clearly distinguish which ones can actually go with you know, a short period without water and to be able to easily read, being able to easily read which plants are actually water stressed. And that's what we're gonna do right now. Come and take a look at these plants real quick. And I'm actually gonna put them in order here with which ones um, have expressed no um, stress from going without water for the last three days. And we've got this aloe plant, which has expressed no interest if I were to categorize it. So this one, I would say, failed what I call the wimpy plant test. And I'm gonna go over the names and, and why we came up with the wimpy plant test among other names that could have been used as well. So we've got this um, cactus plant. The next one we've got here is garden sage. And the garden sage, the leaves have actually wilted a little bit, it's gone down. But I would say that this is not the best candidate as well for um, using as the wimpy plant test being it's a drought tolerant, a naturally drought tolerant plant. Um, and therefore, you know, also grows very deep roots, very expansive roots to also allow it to thrive with very little to minimal water. So I would actually fail um, both the aloe as well as the garden sage as options for um, for the wimpy plant test. And the third one, I was expecting the petunia to actually be a little bit more wilted than what it is. Um, it has expressed some stress, but not as much as the rest. So I'd, I'd even say the petunia failed the test because it looks so good three days later with no water. So I would say these three plants failed. And the next three are actually my choices for the wimpy plant test. This one here is a variegated um, pepper plant that we discussed. So this one is an option. Basil could be another option. And the third are the strawberries. So um, among these three now, which actually passed the wimpy plant test, I'm actually not gonna go with the basil just because it also grows a pretty deep root system. It actually can grow to be a quite tall plant as well if it's not managed and pruned to remain short as this plant can grow easily to two, three, and sometimes even four feet. Um, if it's not managed and we don't want it to compete necessarily with the potted plant desired citrus tree that we've got here So I'm actually gonna fail the basil plants as well, even though it expressed a lot of stress without water um, The two choices now are between the variegated pepper and the strawberry and I'm actually gonna choose strawberries because my family enjoys Strawberries and the same thing for you. You get to decide you want to prefer, you know enjoying the color and the beauty um, of this plant or if you like peppers you can maybe grow um, some peppers as well but of the choices to demonstrate this purpose, I'm actually gonna go with the strawberry plant. So what we're gonna do is actually put the um, strawberry plant here in the container. The other thing too is um, these plants, and you'll notice a lot of these nurseries are actually now growing the plants in these biodegradable pots. And they actually recommend that you actually plant the entire pot in the ground um, and that the roots will ultimately actually grow through the pot. I always am of the belief of actually having it removed because the roots do get coiled before they actually eventually penetrate even this biodegradable pot. So I'm going to pull the plant out carefully here. So here we've got the strawberry plant and now we're going to insert it here. like so. And put those wood chips back in place add some water and before I water I want to share one more thing take a look at the, the pot over here we selected of the um, the pot choices either a clay pot or a plastic pot and we decided to go with the clay being 
It also absorbs water and helps keep a cooler plant. And if you take a look carefully at the pot, you'll notice the top part of the pot is, is dry. But if you come a little lower, you'll notice that it's a little bit darker down here as it's still absorbing water at these last few inches. So it's still retaining water and providing water to the plant and helping keeping the root system cooler than any other top type of pot um, system. So again, for your, your best plants and your best potted success, consider using a clay pot. We're now gonna water the strawberry here. And we're gonna give it a good soaking as this plant was also just newly um, installed uh, less than a week ago. And we're still approaching 80s and 90s and sometimes days over 90 for the next, um, for this upcoming week. So we wanna make sure we actually soak that well. And then we're gonna come and visit this plant in an hour because I'm gonna to prove to you that these plants are not dead. They're gonna come right back within the hour and then we're gonna conclude um, this video. So um, hang tight for about an hour, we're gonna come back. So here we are now. It's been about an hour since we've installed the strawberry plant um, in our container with the uh, Meyer lemon tree. Come and take a look and see how the, how the plant's already bounced back. So you can see the leaves are now um, becoming a little bit more perky. You can see there's a flower over here which is going to start making some strawberries which will hang over the edge of the pot and harvest some strawberries as we're growing some Meyer lemons um, in this container up above. So you can see it's come back. I know for some of you viewers you would say these plants have you know, been doomed because they've gone without water for a few days but I just wanted you to show you that this plant is back as well as all these others that I've just um, watered as well about an hour ago they'll continue to start looking better throughout the day and especially by tomorrow morning um, so I wanted you guys to help me out and I picked this as title for this video to be the wimpy plant test and the strawberry plant being our wimpy plant and I gave you guys some other um, synonyms that could also be used such as the um, the weakling plant test, the droopy plant test, and also the buddy plant test. Um, but I've kind of figured out the wimpy is the best choice being it's a weak plant. The roots will only grow a few inches, um, not more than about six inches within this pot. So they'll actually grow um, these fibrous roots that'll go deeper than your two knuckle test to kind of indicate for us whether or not there is a need for water or not. Once the pot dries out, this plant will begin to droop, and that means it'll be time to water. And at the same time, this plant root system is not invasive and strong and overpowering enough as would a sage plant be. Um, I know the aloe also, these cactuses run very deep roots. They can also compete with the citrus as well. Um, so those would be two, as we said at the beginning, um, not the ideal plants to be putting in a container that you're especially sharing with another plant. So if you have any other ideas in regards to what we should call this test, feel free to um, give me your feedback and you can put those in the comment below. But for now, this is called the wimpy plant test um, for replacing your watering meters and for replacing having to stick your finger in the pot every time to determine whether or not it's time to water. Now what we're gonna be looking at is when, the, when your weakling plant is drooping, that means it'll be time to actually water your pot as we've done um, just about an hour ago. I hope you found this video informative and if so, be sure to like it and most importantly, subscribe down below so you can be connected to all the other educational Ivy Organics videos. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening.